another round of high drama at the Tata Steel Masters, but I had to pick this game from round 11. Wei Yi from China against Max Varmadam. This was uh, a 19th century opening and a real 19th century romantic game with sacrifices, attacks from both sides. That was just incredible. Okay, you're not going to be disappointed by this. Check it out. Starts with the bishop's opening. And we saw the other day that uh, Nepo played c6 and d5. But this time, Varmadam plays bishop c5. Very classical. Knight c3, so now it's a kind of Vienna. Ah, c6 in this position, so wants to go for d5. And f4, so it takes on the character of a king's gambit. And if I look in my database, which I did, I find the first game in the database is from 1869, Tsukatort against Anderson, two luminaries of the 19th century. Uh, it just shows you this uh, goes way back. And at this point, well, both players started to invest a lot of time. You know, there's a lot of people think that, you know, these top guys, they're just regurgitating long engine lines. Sometimes that happens, but sometimes they just improvise. D5 played after 14 minutes. Looks very principled. Shut out that bishop. Pawn takes pawn. And one if, if pawn takes pawn, then bishop b5 check. Mm, it's probably okay for black, but knight g4 is more critical. <laughs> so this is just going for a material grab. Looking to play knight f2. And at this moment... Wei Yi thought for around about 50 minutes, 5 0, 50 minutes. Massive think. Because if, if he's going to give up material, he has to be pretty certain that he's going to get something for it. Um, he went for knight f3. There we are. So it allows knight f2. In fact, Varmadam castled here. But if knight f2, then queen e2, and actually this is good fun for white. Um, and there, were, there was a game, actual game, that went like this. And even though it went to, into an end game, basically white managed to scoop up that knight in the corner. You can see two pawns and a piece for a rook uh, and very nice pieces. Anyway, that's another story. Uh, so after knight f3, Varmadam castled. That took him 26 minutes to play that. And pawn takes pawn on e5. Impressive pawns, but now knight f2. Attacking the queen, so we've got a fork here. And queen e2 and knight takes rook. So, I mean, this really does look like it's out of the 19th century because, you know, in those days, somehow... They always seem to grab the material like this. And then, you know, their opponent had a chance to attack. Um, and if it worked, it worked. If it didn't, then, you know, black got away with grabbing the material. I mean, personally, I wouldn't play like this with black. It looks terrifying to give your opponent so much activity. But anyway, bishop g5. Remember, black is a rook up here. Bishop g5 is quite an annoying move. It pushes the, the queen to uh, a poor square and, of course, prepares to castle queenside. That's the real move. So what do you play here? Queen a5, best move. So black is actually starting a bit of a counter-attack here. d6, nice move. Opening up the diagonal for the bishop. And that pawn... It's pretty good. It certainly could, you know, cement a bishop on e7. Bishop g4 played. Yeah, I mean, when I was looking at this, I was thinking, bishop b6? Doesn't that kind of make sense? To cut out that bishop and then knight d7? 
could be a decent blockade, but I mean, white certainly has compensation, but that was my first thought. But bishop g4 played instead. And bishop e7. Now this is what I like to call a starfish bishop. The starfish bish. It's looking in lots of different directions and it's it's anchored right there in the middle. And that makes life very difficult for black's major pieces actually when that bishop just kind of shuts out black's pieces. A little bit like an octopus knight, but it's a starfish bish. Knight d7. And e6, so that breaks things open towards black's king. So this is really double-edged. I mean, if this is taken, then you can just take the knight on d7, actually. And white is doing rather well. So after e6, what did black play? Bishop a3, another extraordinary move. So obviously, if that's taken, then queen takes knight with a with a double check, a double double attack. So first of all, pawn takes pawn check at the other end of the board. Who's going to break through first? This is a mad position. Uh, yeah, I mean, if that's taken, then that's really not terribly good. Knight g5 and black's king. Well, queen, queen takes bishop is happening and black's king doesn't look very well placed. Um, king h8 played and castles queenside. I don't know if this is castling into it or not, um, but actually the king is reasonably safe there. Queen takes knight, although this does look rather scary. Funny, funny pins here. Pawn takes bishop. And Varmadam fought for just over a minute here. And he took on f3. I mean, black has a lot of options here. And it's really not clear which the best is. Well, unless, unless you switch on the computer, then it's a bit clearer. But for example, well, he played bishop takes knight. But one could also consider queen takes a3 check. In fact, Wei Yi thought that was the best response. Or perhaps you could play b5 to push the bishop and keep attacking here. In fact, this is should be good for white. And bishop b6, apparently better for white. And there's a5, a bizarre looking move. My computer thinks that that's the best move. How on earth do you find a move like that? <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Um, anyway, if you're interested in investigating that, you're welcome. Uh, bishop takes, knight played. Pawn takes. And here's a funny variation. So knight e5 was played. But if queen takes pawn check, then the king actually runs this way. Another check. You can keep giving checks. The king runs all the way across the board and then king g1 so is ready to just snap off the knight and actually white stands better there because at the end of it white is left after all these exchanges white is left with this incredible bishop on e7 which dominates the rooks and this wonderful passed pawn so that didn't happen Knight e5 played instead. King b1. And let me see. Queen d4. So that's perhaps maybe hoping the knight might come out. But there's also a check here to hassle the king. You never know. Rook takes knight. So finally this one drops off. And we can see what's the material balance. Basically, white is still the exchange down. But that bishop dominates both rooks, actually. It's such a powerful piece. So it's anchored there by the pawn on d6. I think this is a theme that uh, I've mentioned in quite a few of the games, actually, from the tournament, where there's a material imbalance. 
and minor pieces need good support if they're anchored by a pawn or sometimes another piece they're stable they can't be pushed away and that makes all the difference so in, you can see this bishop is beautifully supported <clears throat> and those rooks just don't get a look in basically queen b6 check king c1 rook takes pawn okay that's improved the situation of of this rook a little bit but that's still a problem for black rook d1 yeah we can see the starfish bish in all its power there rook d1 good move supporting the d pawn so at some point the pawn is ready to just march down the board rook f8 that's why the eighth rank needs some protection it's interesting isn't it look at these pawns not very beautiful but actually they do a really good job of shutting out black's queen and actually white's king is safe on c1 it's a curious position d7 there we go so now there's a potential threat to take here and maybe go queen e8 so anyway rook move to the side and this next move i think is absolutely beautiful so certainly not the only move that uh that wins but queen e5 that's wonderful queens like to be centralized you know they conquer so many squares when they're in the middle of the board it's looking in all directions not only does it it kind of it rather dominates black's queen actually if you look you know these squares are taken it looks in all directions defensively very very powerful just an absolutely dominating move i love it rook d8 i mean there really is nothing better for black here when i was watching the game my first thought was rook d6 rook h6 rook takes pawn check and queen h5 mate it would be really nice to be able to get that in but after rook d6 in fact after queen g1 yeah the best move is actually to to bring the rook back it's it's uh, rather unfortunate you know that for example like this would have been an absolutely splendid way to finish the game to to turn right suddenly anyway it's fantasy it's after rook, as i said after rook d6 queen g1 is actually okay for black okay let's go back so in this position f4 played instead very sound obviously if you can play f6 and just break open a window towards the king then black is lost so c5 so that allows the queen to at least look in this direction but it's not very effective bishop takes queen takes and queen takes c5 here varmadam decided enough is enough and he resigned the game he is let me see he's two pawns down but of course that's the relevant part of the position just very unpleasant for black you just can't escape for example h6 queen d6 let's make sure this one really can't move okay now let's switch the rook round rook e7 this is not getting better for black let's put it like that and very soon black is just going to collapse here Wei Yi said afterwards that this was the best game he'd played in the last five years well I'm not surprised he's proud of that because he played with great imagination great daring and yeah some not only some great tactical ideas but some strategic ideas too as I said I, I love that move Queen e5 that just dominates the board dominates black's queen looks towards black's king as well brilliant stuff now standings abdus satorov had a good day he beat uh, ju wenjun and he has seven and a half he's in the lead just behind him gukesh on seven and then there are four players on six and a half giri vidit pragnananda and wei yi just two rounds to go looking good for abdus satorov but tomorrow is of course crucial 
Abdus Atorov plays black against Vidit. And Gukesh has white against Pragnananda. It's going to be fascinating. 